<laughs> it's a baby. It's a baby. The fossil had been found in a limestone quarry at a site called Taung. So Dart called it Taung Child. Its scientific name is Australopithecus africanus, the southern ape of Africa. She stood further back in time than Neanderthal at 40,000 years, or Homo erectus at over half a million. Piltdown was assumed to be around a million years, But Taung went even further back, to more than two million years. If she was the missing link, then that link was more ape-like than anyone had ever imagined. It also placed our ancestral home firmly in Africa for the first time. In South Africa, two million years ago, the world of Taung Child, just like the savannah today, was a place of food scarcity. There were no easy pickings. Taung's mother, at a little over three feet tall and just over five stone, was no hunter, but supplemented her diet by scavenging from the scraps left by predators. Like a modern chimp, she used rocks as a basic implement to break open bones for their rich marrow protein. But the predators she owed her lunch to were never far away. You've got saber-toothed cats, you've got giant hyenas, you've got hunting hyenas, a whole plethora of carnivores, very dangerous carnivores that we don't have anymore. And they would have all been eating or going after things like the Tong child or even uh, Tong's mother. Absorbed by the remains of a carcass, the mother had placed her child a short distance away in the shade of a tree. Her three-year-old was the size of an 18-month human infant and had no protection apart from its mother. She knew there were threats, but she'd keep one eye out for the child, like any parent. They definitely would have cared for their children. I mean, you see chimpanzees as the most caring of parents. There's no reason to say that Tong wasn't cared for. The problem with the Tong child was it's probably just old enough and rambunctious enough that it was leaving its mother for stretches at a time. The mother was unaware that the baby had wandered away until it was too late. There was no sight or smell of a predator in the undergrowth. But predators don't just exist on the ground. You've also got a threat uh, from eagles. They've been documented to take human children up in Kenya to the age of six years of age. I mean, an eagle has a, these incredibly strong talons, greater, uh, it's a lovely foot, greater lift to weight ratio than an F-15 fighter jet. The child was unaware of the danger from above. The mother saw the eagle and the child in the same moment, but couldn't get to her baby quickly enough. Tang's skull was found with eggshells and other broken skulls, typical of deposits found in eagles' nests. A lot of the skulls, interestingly, have these V-shaped impressions from this eagle's beak going through, because preferentially they eat out the brain. Very rich, nutritious source of protein. This small, defenseless creature was Raymond Dart's missing link. Valentine's Day, 1925, just two months after Taung Child had first emerged from the rock. A week earlier, Dart had published a scientific paper claiming Taung was the missing link and unleashing a storm of controversy.
Darth thinks he's got the missing link. But there's also this Piltdown specimen that matches what the scientific establishment thinks. Brain growth was thought to have driven human evolution, and Piltdown had a large brain and ape-like teeth. But Taung had the opposite, a small brain and human-looking teeth. The whole mix of different features that you find with the Tong Cha really is quite interesting. It's a whole reversal. It's more like an, a man-ape than an ape-man. And it's a complete different mix of features that the world hadn't seen and the world actually wasn't ready for. Have you seen Professor Dart? The biggest experts in this field all backed Piltdown. Any sort of voices of doubt were generally uh, just overridden by the authority of these people. Dart's publication directly contradicted the scientific establishment. Could anybody tell me where I can find Professor Dart? He sent it to London to be reviewed by the world experts, the same experts whose views he contradicts. And these so-called experts dismiss it because they've got their money on the other horse. He had one ally in his struggle for recognition, Dr. Robert Broom, like Dart, an anatomist and fossil collector. Broom had the reviews from London. Raymond, ah. Raymond I, I thought you'd be interested in these. Some responses to your short paper in Nature. There's one there by Sir Arthur Keith. What does he have to say? Not very encouraging, I'm afraid. He places Taung in the same subfamily as gorillas. What? How? Well, he says here, the brain is clearly too small to be a human ancestor. The experts lined up to condemn Dart's description of a fossil they'd never but even seen. How can he know what's too small or too big? <laughs> How can he possibly claim that a human ancestor's brain had to be a particular size? What's his yardstick? A, a standard size bowler hat? What's, what's the matter with it, Robert? Do they think I'm making it up? So what went wrong for Raymond Dart? Wrong man, wrong place, wrong thing. He's the wrong man. He's an Australian. He's not part of the establishment. It's the wrong place. Southern Africa. Everyone's expecting another place, either Europe or Asia. It's the wrong thing. He calls it an ape. Everyone thinks it's an ape. Well, if it's an ape, where, is, where does it fit in the story? Tao is showing so many points of affinity with the gorilla and the chimpanzee that there cannot be a moment's hesitation in placing the fossil in this living group. How can he say that? Don't know. Smith Woodward dismisses the whole thing out of hand. He says that town certainly has. Sorry, old man. Dart has made probably one of the most remarkable discoveries of the 20th century, and the scientific establishment completely discounts it, discredits his find, and literally puts it in a box or suspense account for 25 years. In the 1920s and 30s, the most widely read textbook on human origins did not even mention Dart's find. His work was not taught in universities. Dart had suffered an incredible amount. I mean, Dart was really put in kind of scientific obscurity. And it really is not until the late 40s that he starts again, once that tide of opinion starts to turn and shows that he was actually correct. It took a quarter of a century of digging in South Africa's limestone caves to produce the evidence Dart needed. By the late 1940s, a dozen fossils similar to Taung Child finally proved he was right. So, what had become of Charles Dawson and his Piltdown Man? Forty years after it emerged as the prime contender for the missing link, 
the Piltdown fossils were examined scientifically for the first time, and finally revealed for what they always were, an elaborate hoax. There was embarrassment and puzzlement, uh, astonishment, disbelief in some cases, that this thing was not genuine. But I think for the greater world of science, uh, there was relief, particularly outside of Britain, because so many people by then had decided there was something peculiar about Pildown, even if they couldn't put their finger on it. At the Natural History Museum in London, scientists decided to apply some newly available chemical tests. But as soon as the sample was drilled from the jawbone, they noticed something strange. The distinct smell of burnt flesh. This could only come from organic bone, not fossil. So the jaw couldn't be more than a few thousand years old and clear marks could be seen on the surface of the teeth. Scratch marks. Originally from a modern ape, they'd been filed down to look human. The entire assemblage, stained to look old, was a forgery. It has never been proved who the perpetrator was, but with the demise of Piltdown, an old idea died with it that a big brain was the defining factor in the missing link. Something else had to come before the evolution of a big brain. A new theory replaced the old. What defined the beginning of humanity was not brain growth. In 1915, a young boy named Louis Leakey was looking for stone tools near his missionary home, the beginning of a lifelong obsession that led Leakey to revolutionize the story of human origins. Forty-four years later, Leakey was looking for the missing link and the search had taken him to what is now Tanzania. Leakey had persuaded the scientific world that what defined the first human ancestor was tools. Now, all he had to do was find one. He was supported by his second wife, Mary, and her son, Jonathan, just out of school. Oh, you got something, boy. They found plenty of stone tools, but no sign of Leakey's tool maker. He'd been looking here for 22 years. His luck had to change soon. On the 17th of July, 1959, Louis Leakey was laid low with the flu. Major work at the dig site had slowed while he recovered, but it was a day that would make his career. In the cool of the early morning, Mary took the opportunity to walk her dogs and headed away from the camp. She wasn't expecting to find much in the way of fossils, but this year's rains had done them an unexpected favor. As she casually scanned the broken surface, her mind suddenly registered an unmistakable shape exposed in the dirt. The top of a skull. Mary was convinced it must be the toolmaker they'd been searching for. Lewis. Lewis, darling, please wake up. I found something very important. Darling, please, I know you're not feeling well, but try and wake up. What are you, 